Do you remember that feeling of looking at your bank account after that first David Hay fight and thinking, I'm a multi-millionaire um, now? And how, how, like, what was the feeling? The fair the um, phone me, so I've been waiting for about eight weeks. May have been longer, might have been, might have been 12 weeks for the, for, the, for the box office money to come through. But at this stage, I already know in my mind, in the back, I've now completely relaxed. I've beat David, I've had the crazy results. I've now crossed over as well. I'm now a, a public figure. Like as a world champion, yeah, I was known. I'd even done a Rocky movie for fuck's sake before this. So me, I, I crossed over to a different kind of set up group of people. I crossed over to your average person. So your grandmothers knew me at this stage, things like that. That's when you start, fame really kicks in. But after beating David, it's now gone to another level because David's a crossover star. David's a great looking kid. He's fucking David Hay. He takes his top off. He looks a million dollars. He's, he's David and he's just, he's the king of the world. When I beat him, it goes absolutely insane. Uh, and I'm living now in a different world, but I ain't got the money to be living the way I'd like to live right now. I've got enough in me accounts. The business is going well. At this stage in time now, after beating David, I've got enough to start buying properties and building up our property portfolio for the family and the kids, something I'd always planned on doing. But when Eddie phones me three months later and he goes, tomorrow I'm just giving you the call. The box office money's landed. He said, and tomorrow you're going to look in your bank and you're a multimillionaire. Congratulations. If anyone deserves it, it's you. The, me and Eddie have a backstory and it's mad to think that I was, I could have walked away from Eddie. I didn't have, no, I've never had a contract with Eddie in. I'm probably one of, I'm probably the, the highest profile fighter he's had who's made him the most money who he's never had a signed contract with ever. And we dealt on a handshake. Bear in mind, I was a world champion with no deal in place. I was top property. After Goodison Park victory, the way I'd done it and the way I executed it, it was perfect. I then defend me world title and I smash some guy called BJ Flores like no one's ever done him before. I get rid of him and then I get a phone call offering me 1.6 million pounds to fight David Hay on BT box office. And I say, no. And Eddie tells me on the phone and says, I can't offer you that money. You've got to take it. And I said, I'm not going to take it. I said, we shook hands and we're going to see this through. He says to me, Tom, I can't give you that money. I ain't got that kind of money to give you right now. I said, I know he wants to fight me now. He's going to deal with you because David didn't want to deal with Eddie. He didn't like Eddie. Uh, and yeah, so loyalty means just as much to me as well. But getting to that stage in my life was very, very difficult. I can't explain to you how hard it was. I'm believing in yourself, backing yourself. When that phone call came in, and at this stage, I've got a few hundred grand. I've got a right few hundred grand. It's cleared. I've paid me taxes. I've done stuff like that. But at the time, it's in a company. So I'm not really... It's all good. You can be a multi-millionaire, but it's stuck in a company. Mate, you ain't a millionaire. Until you've got that money personally and the taxes paid, and it's in your bank, which is very, very hard to do. That's when you're a multi-millionaire. So I had to wait a long time to get to that stage. Uh, but thankfully enough, I did. I carried on believing in myself. And, and I showed that I can be loyal even when tested at the most difficult of times. Because you can imagine when I've got that phone call that night and this man's off me £1.6 million and says to me, I know you don't trust where this money's coming from, but I can have it at your front door tomorrow. That's <laughs> what so this man says to me. I can have it at your front door. And believe you me, this man could. have £1.6 million in a suitcase at my front door the next day. And, and I say no to it. And at this time, I've got a wife who's listening to this phone call with me. And she's saying, you better have a fucking good plan or you're going out this door. Because <laughs> at this stage now, I've got three kids and I've just knocked back 1.6 million pounds and I'm basically worth 480 grand. And that's in a company, by the way, as well. Mm. And they show me 1.6 million. It just quadruples me net worth. Mm. So, and I knock it back. To this day, I still can't believe I had the audacity to do it, but I mean, that handshake means something. Mm. So we do, we agree a deal. When the money comes in the bank, I'm not going to lie, it, it was, what's it called when something is... Anticlimax? Yeah, mm. I did. I seen it, and I had to actually go to a cash machine to say, I had, I had 
online access and I could have done it that way, but I didn't. I wanted to go into casting, put the digits in, <laughs> put the numbers. So yeah, I wanted to see the actual the, the zeros on, on the thing and see what it looked like. And uh, it was over. Well, that's a weird I'm looking for. It just didn't, no. That's when I realised it wasn't about money. I just thought, this is this is not all it's made out to be. I didn't, nothing's changed me as a person. Nothing's changed in my life. I've still got three hungry kids. I've still got a wife I adore. Uh, yeah, nothing really changes. You know how it feels. Uh -huh.